configure dynamic NAT. Configure dynamic NAT. Configure traffic that will be permitted. On R2, on this router R2, configure one statement for access list number one to permit any address belonging to the 172.16.00 prefix 16 network. Okay, all this network. Okay, 172.16.00 prefix 16 includes all these, all these networks. Okay, all these internal networks. Okay, and go to R2. Command line interface, enter, enable. And configure terminal, global configuration mode. Okay. Access list one. Use a simple standard access list Okay, because the number is one for a standard uh, access dash list one space and permit this uh, this network 172.16.00 prefix 16 and includes uh, this three network one two three includes these three networks go to R2 permit 172.16.00 and prefix 16 on access list use the wildcard 0, 0, 25, 25. enter that is enough configure a pool of address for NAT network address translation configure R2 okay again R2 with a NAT pool that uses two addresses in the 209, 165, 200, 228 prefix here the address space Okay, we use only two addresses. Okay, go to R2. Type in a pool. Okay, create a pool. Uh, no a specific name, so use any name for the pool. For example, pool dash one space uh, two addresses. 228 is the network address, 229 the first host address, 230 the second and last host address, and 231 the broadcast address. Remember, prefix 30 only permit two host addresses. Okay, 228 is the network, 209, 165, 200, 229 is the first host. 209, 165, 200, and 230, the second. And don't don't forget the prefix or subnet mask, net mask. Use the theory, and theory is 285, 285, 285, 252. Okay, very good. Enter. Notice the topology, there are three network addresses that would be translated based on the access list created okay the access list number one permit 172.16.00 prefix 16 includes these three networks one two and three and will be translated with using this pool of addresses only two addresses 229 and 230 what will happen if more than two devices attempt to access the internet? Okay. Okay, and remember you have only two public addresses, two public addresses for translation. Okay, the first device will use 20, 229, the second device will use 230, and a third device will be denied. Also, Okay, so the answer is the additional devices would be denied access until one of the previous translations time out freeing up um, address to use. Associate access list one with the NAT pool. Okay, you created the access list, you created the pool, but uh, NAT is not uh, completed. You need an additional configuration. There is a relationship between the access list one and the pool, in this case, pool dash one. 
and is the following. Enter the command that associates access list one with the NAT pool that you just created. Okay, IP NAT inside source source list 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 number one and pool name of the pool pool dash one case sensitive pool dash one. Okay, enter. Configure the NAT interfaces. Configure R2 interfaces with the appropriate inside and outside NAT configurations. Okay, you created the access list, you created the pool. Okay, you created the you created the relationship between access list one and pool. But now configure interfaces. Uh, on R2, serial 00 is outside because this is internet, internet side is outside and serial 001 is inside for the clients. Okay, go to R2 interface here, 000, IP NAT outside and serial 001, IP NAT inside, enter, exit. Verify. Access services across the internet from web browser of R1, PC1, or PC2 access the web page for server one. Okay, go to PC1, desktop, web browser, use this IP address of server one, 209.165.2.1.5, go, server one, success, PC2, web browser, 209.165.209.165.2.1.5, go, server one, success, and go to L1, okay, desktop, web browser, Two of nine one sixty five two of one that five go. Okay, will be denied because this is the third device request timeout. Okay, PC one is the third, very good. PC two the second. Okay, access and L one the third device cannot access. Okay, and go to R two. View NAT translations. View the NAT translation on R2. Identify the internal source address of the PC and translate that address from the NAT pool in the command output. Show IP NAT translations on R2. Okay, and to go privilege exec mode and show IP NAT translation. And you will see the, this table. Inside global, is 209, 165, 200, 229. And inside local is 172, 16, 10, 1. Okay, PC1, go to IP configuration, 172, 16, 10, 1. 172, 16, 10, 1 is the inside local, the private IP address of PC1. And this private IP address is translated to 209.165.200.229 and is translated here on R2. And the destination outside local and outside global is 209.165.201.5, the IP address of server one. Then another entry 209.165.200.230D and the private inside local is 172.16.10.2 and go to PC2, close web browser IP 172.16.10.2 172.16.10.2 is the inside local, the a, a private IP address of PC2 
and was translated to 209, 165, 200, 230. Okay, was translated on R2. And the destination is the IP address of server one. Okay, and uh, there is no entry for R1 because um, on R2, you have only two, two addresses, 229 and 230. 229 use it for PC1 and 230 use it for PC2. Okay, completion 100%. Thank you very much.